I try to avoid sucralose and other artificial sweeteners, but it's less about what it's going to do to me and more about what it's going to do to them. I'll tell you all about it coming up in two seconds. Welcome, I'm John of John Health and Fitness. Today we're going to talk about sucralose and other artificial sweeteners and why I avoid them. Now I want to make it clear from the very start, this is not about scolding you for your bad eating habits. I do not eat perfectly clean. Were you to follow me around for a week, there's a decent chance you'll find me eating a slice of pepperoni pizza. And were I to find a random chocolate chip cookie, a honey wheat pretzel twist, and a couple of Skittles rolling around the bottom of my son's lunchbox at the end of the day, I am not above eating those. And that is not purely a hypothetical situation. And it's not about some of the things you may have already heard about artificial sweeteners causing cancer and the like. I want to delve into something maybe a little bit more interesting and maybe something you haven't heard before. And that's what artificial sweeteners can do to your microbiota. Now when it comes to the microbiota or microbiome, I have a fair amount of expertise in this. I'll put a link down in the description to Microbiome Bulletin where I cover a lot of these issues. This is part of what I do for my health and fitness business. It's partly personal training and some group fitness classes, but I also do nutritional counseling. And it's becoming increasingly clear that the gut health, the health of your microflora, the tens of trillions of bacteria, archaea, fungi, and other tiny little organisms living in and on you play a huge role in your health. They synthesize vitamins you cannot, like certain B's and K's. They help regulate your immune system. They can help digest certain kinds of fibers that you cannot, producing short-chain fatty acids that can help promote gut health. Their health can be integral to everything from irritable bowel syndrome all the way to mental health. The research is still young, but I've been following this very closely, and it's something I've started taking increasingly seriously, as is the scientific and medical community. So what do we know? Not a whole lot, partly because we're still just starting to understand the interplay between these tens of trillions of microorganisms and yourself. Keep in mind that there are actually more of these microorganisms, these separate living things in and on you, than there are all your own human cells. That's why it's often said we're only half human, if that. And even if we don't know everything, we know it's something we need to pay attention to. We know it's something we need to understand better. All right, so what does the research tell us? Let's take a look at this first video, throw it up underneath the eye up there. There is research suggesting that the ingestion of sucralose can actually damage the beneficial microbes in your gut and reduce their populations. This is really important because one of the real benefits of having these tens of trillions of largely either beneficial or benign microorganisms in your gut is the fact that they can outcompete pathogens they either outright just destroy them for their own benefit, or they simply crowd them out for resources. Keep in mind that a huge amount of your immune system is devoted to the gut. Your gut is the pathway inside your body, and that's where your immune system is concentrated. And your microbiota plays a huge role in this. And so if your microbiota is compromised, if those beneficial microbes are compromised, it compromises that first line of defense. This research also suggests that despite claims to the contrary, sucralose actually can be metabolized in the body. These metabolites can accumulate in fat cells. It's unknown what these metabolites do. They could be completely harmless or not. They just don't know yet. Let's look at the second video. This one cites research that the introduction of sucralose into the food chain was associated with increases in metabolic syndrome, obesity, and other kinds of metabolic disorders. Now, correlation is not necessarily causation, but as the video notes, this has happened throughout a number of countries. And so there is a pattern there to be wary of, and that warrants further research. Also in that video is aspartame can also be metabolized by your gut microorganisms, turning into formaldehyde. Now some people are actually allergic to formaldehyde. Not everyone, and not everyone has these gut bacteria that do this, but those that do can have very adverse reaction to the ingestion of aspartame. There's other research as well, and I'll link articles to those down in the description. So this research is all very preliminary. Our understanding of what it does to the microbiota is still unclear. In fact, our understanding of the microbiota's role in all these other functions is also unclear. However, for me, there's enough evidence to warrant caution. And so while I might occasionally consume an artificial sweetener here and there, including sucralose, I do try to avoid its chronic use. The other sweeteners out there you can use. I'm gonna link an article down in the description that cites some of those. But it's mainly sugar alcohol, stevia, even sugar itself in modest quantities. So what should you do? In fairness, you do have to balance the pros and cons. If you have found that using artificial sweeteners have reduced your sugar consumption, and that's helped you to lose weight, or help you reduce symptoms associated with diabetes, then that's a clear benefit. We don't know exactly what the cost is, if any, but you do have to weigh these things. Sugar in itself, in huge quantities, can be a poison. Sucralose, aspartame, ACE-K, we're not really sure yet. For now, FDA approved, and so that balance is one you have to strike for yourself. I would suggest as you consume these artificial sweeteners, you can just monitor how your body reacts to them. 
Read the label, see if it's sucralose, see if it's aspartame or ACE-K or any of these others. For that matter, sugar alcohols. Some people have adverse reactions to those. I have in larger quantities. So do let me know down in the comments your own experiences with artificial sweeteners or sugar or the swapping between the two and the kind of decisions you've made for yourself. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, hit that alert bell. If you don't hit the alert bell, you'll never see me again. That's just how it works. Thanks for watching. Take care. Catch you next time.